Hello friends, Mr. Ryan here. Today we're going to talk about active transport. We just finished passive transport. Remember, diffusion. We go from a high amount of concentration of molecules to a low amount. And we have diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. We go from a high concentration to low, and it does not require energy. Today we're going to talk about active transport, where we're going to go from a low concentration to high, and that does take energy. If you look at this picture, we have a picture of the cell membrane. Okay, so we have the, the phospholipid, right? Remember, the cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. There it is, one layer, two layers. And uh, we also have some, some uh, structures in the cell membrane that are made out of protein. Now, when we talked about diffusion, those protein um, uh, parts of the cell membrane were called uh, protein channels. They just let things flow through uh, from, for diffusion from high concentration to low. But in this case, we're talking about going from a low concentration to the many. In this small picture down here, you can see what's inside the cell is just a few molecules. Outside the cell is a lot of molecules. And if you look at the big picture here, you can see those few molecules going through the protein structure. In this case, we call it the protein pump and it, the molecules are getting pumped to the outside of the cell. And that takes energy. And that energy is called ATP. And where did that energy come from? That energy came from that organelle, the mighty mitochondria. Now, larger molecules and clumps of material can also be actively transported across the cell membrane by a process known as exocytosis and endocytosis. So let's look at endocytosis. Well, we know the cyto means cell, endo means come on in. Exocytosis, cyto means cell, exo means the exit. So we have things coming in and going out of the cell. The transport of these larger materials sometimes involves change in the shape of the cell membrane. So here's the cell membrane. Some molecules and ions are carried across membranes by proteins in the membrane that act like pumps. We talked about it just a little bit ago. Many cells use proteins to move calcium, potassium, and sodium ions across the cell membranes. Changes in protein shape seem to play an important role in the pumping process. So in other words, these protein structures change shape, and that takes energy. A considerable portion of the energy used by the cell in their daily activities is devoted to provide the energy to keep this form of active transport working. So a lot of the cell's energy is used for active transport. Bulk transport. Larger molecules and even solid clumps of materials may be transported by movements of the cell membrane known as bulk transport. Bulk transport can take several forms depending on the size and shape of the material moved in or out of the cell. Endocytosis. Endocytosis, again, is the process of taking materials into the cell by means of infolding or pockets of the cell membrane. So here we got endocytosis. Here's something coming into the cell. And as you can see, there's a little gap in the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is actually making a vesicle around the, the molecule of substance coming into the cell. The, that pocket results, breaks loose from the outer portion of the cell membrane and forms a vesicle or a vacuole within the cytoplasm. Large molecule clumps of food and even whole cells can be taken up by endocytosis. And there's two types of endocytosis. There's phagocytosis and pinocytosis. In phagocytosis, the extension of the cytoplasm surrounds a particle and package it with a food vacuole. That cell engulfs it. So for example, it's like Pac-Man. You get this little pellet, you get the Pac-Man coming around and just engulfing the uh, little pellet, okay? Amoebas, a single cell creature, uses this method for taking in food, okay? Engulfing material in a way that requires a, a considerable amount of energy and therefore is a form of active transport. It takes a lot of energy to engulf uh, a, um, a particle and, and put it in you. Endocytosis, again, in pinocytosis, cells take up liquids from surrounding environments by forming tiny pockets along the cell membrane. The pocket will fill with liquid and pinch off to form vacuoles within the cell. 
So phagocytosis takes in large things into the cell. Pinocytosis takes up the liquid in the, the, into the cell. Now we have exocytosis. That's when things are going to be released from the cell. Many cells also release large amounts of materials from a cell, a process known as exocytosis. During exocytosis, the membrane of the vacuole surrounding the material fuses with the cell membrane, forcing the contents out of the cell. So here we come with that vesicle, and it comes to the cell membrane. Now the outside of the vesicle becomes part of the cell membrane, and then the particle is, is put outside the cell. Remember, at endocytosis, the part of the cell membrane circles whatever's coming into the cell and makes a vesicle. That's it for today, the short lesson. Thank you. As fun as always, have fun and keep learning.